Hey guys, it's Amber from the WOW Creative Team. This month's Facebook fan page challenge is all about bright color combinations and celebration cards. I'm gonna be showing you how I've mixed together these three super bright primary embossing powders to create these beautiful fall leaves celebrating autumn and Thanksgiving. A link to the challenge is in the description below and if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do that while you're down there. So I pulled out some of my brightest embossing powders. I have Primary Apple Red, Primary Bird of Paradise, and Lime Ricky, which is inspired by Katherine Pooler. I'll also pull out my Primary Lemon as well. I don't end up using that one, but it's a great bright yellow if you're in need of one. All of these powders are translucent and a single color. Here I have the Altenew Grape Leaves Stamp and Die Bundle. I thought this would be a great set to create these leaves because they have these really nice solid stamps with just a little bit of that negative space to add a little character to the image. I do end up embossing some of the outline stamps, but on the final cards, I choose these solid images. So I'm just treating my paper with an anti-static powder tool. This is Nina Classic Cross Solar White 80 pound and I have the WOW embossing pad here. I'll go ahead and ink that up. Now, if I were going to emboss an entire background panel, I would use the Nina 110 pound cardstock because it's less likely to warp being a thicker cardstock. But since I'm gonna be die cutting these anyway, I decided to use the 80 pound cardstock. I do like to ink everything up twice just to make sure I get a good impression because I can't see the ink since it's clear. So I'll go ahead and ink that up again. And let's pour in our powder. So my thought was that these would be leaves that were changing colors in the midst of changing colors. So I wanted to have some green, a little bit of orange, and a little bit of red in the same leaf. So I'm just gonna sprinkle on a little bit here and there. Now I don't wanna dump this orange onto the coffee filter with the green in it, so I just grabbed another one. And I wanna make sure I keep those separate so I don't contaminate them. As long as you just gently tap your cardstock, you won't really get contamination of the fall off that's going back into the coffee filter. But if you tap it really hard, you could get some red or orange mixed in with your green and um, all of that. So for the last step, I'll take one of the colors of the powder and put it all over the entirety of the stamp just to make sure that everything's covered. Now I do think it's a little bit strange that there's such, such a sharp line on that green. So I'm just gonna use a dry paintbrush and kind of rough up that edge just a little bit. And then I'll pour on a little bit more of the green so that I have more of a jagged edge versus just a straight line. The straight line looked a little bit odd to me. I followed those same steps to create a second leaf and I'll go ahead and start melting the embossing powder. So this is the dual speed heat tool from WOW and I have it set to the highest speed. For best results and to minimize warping to your paper, you want to make sure that you preheat your heat tool for about 45 to 60 seconds before you start heating up the embossing powder. And then just keep your tool moving. You wanna keep it anywhere between four to six inches away from your cardstock. You don't wanna get too close or stay in one place for too long. So you can see that as the embossing powder melts, it starts to get dark and shiny. And you can see that color change here. I've left this at the normal speed so that you have a good idea of how long the heat embossing takes. It's pretty quick and I just love watching it melt. So you can see that the translucent powders are super shiny, they're glossy. And I think this just has a lovely finish and I really enjoy these three colors mixed together, which is unusual. You wouldn't normally mix these colors together on a project, at least I wouldn't. I have a scrap of Royal Sundance Fiber Sunflower Cardstock here, and this is on clearance right now. They're closing it out at cutcardstock.com. I'll have a link to it down below, but you can get 25 sheets for just over $5 at the time of this recording. I'm just tearing up the sides here. I'm gonna tear both sides because I want to heat emboss these rough edges with gold pearl embossing powder. This is something that I saw my friend Anna Adams do. She's at Ritzy Hag on Instagram. If you haven't checked out her cards, you definitely want to. She's super, super talented. Um, but she did this on several cards recently and I thought it looked so great. I wanted to give it a whirl. So I'll just take my WOW embossing ink pad directly to the cardstock. I'm making sure to get the edges, but then also some of the rough top of the cardstock as well. Like the area where you can see kind of like the top 
layer of the cardstock has torn off. I want it on the edges and on the top of that. I inked up both sides and then I grabbed my, this is my all time favorite gold embossing powder, you guys. This is gold pearl. It is gorgeous, I love it. It doesn't have that brassy gold feel to it. It is literally just like the perfect gold for me. Once I had all the ink covered, I'm gonna go ahead and heat set it. And I sped this up since you've already seen me heat emboss, but look how pretty that is, you guys. So you can see it get that bright, really pretty gold sheen to it. And there's not a ton of the embossing powder on here. It's just little bits here and there. And I think it is just so pretty how it catches the light. So I'm just gonna play around with my arrangements of the leaves and I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like this arrangement at all. So I'm gonna put that to the side. I do end up using that yellow piece, just not on this card. So I grabbed another piece of Nina Classic Crest Solar White. This is the 80 pound again. And I'm just gonna tear this up just like I did the yellow piece. And I'll heat emboss these edges with gold. So I tore the cardstock down both sides. I'll go ahead and use the same gold pearl gonna knock off the excess from the middle here because I didn't pre-treat it with anti-static powder tool. And then I'll heat emboss that. And look at how pretty that is, you guys. It is amazing. And because of the way the cardstock was torn and it like tore off the top layer, the edges are super, super thin and feathery, which is just so gorgeous with the gold pearl on there. So I'll go ahead and arrange a couple of these leaves. You can see off to the right, I also did some of the outline leaves and I didn't really like those as much as the solid ones. They just kind of lacked some oomph. So I didn't end up using those. I did put them in the stamp package to save them for a later date. And I picked out a couple sentiments from the stamp set. So I have give thanks here and I love it when there's a dainty scripty sentiment with a sans serif. That's one of my favorites and it just fits perfectly. So I'm gonna pop this up on some sticky back fun foam. I'll get that arranged and then I'll adhere one of the leaves directly to this popped up panel and then I'll pop up the second leaf that's on top. To finish off the card, I'll also add a couple of Nouveau Ebony crystal drops just to add a little more contrast. And I just love how this turned out, you guys. The edges of the torn paper are just so cool and look at the mix of the embossing powders. Super pretty. Here's the second card that we're gonna start now and I did end up repurposing that yellow strip that we made earlier. Here I have the Thanks Wafer Die from CZ Design. I've cut the shadow out of the Sunflower cardstock and I'm gonna emboss that with the gold pearl embossing powder. So I just press the die cut directly onto the stamp pad to ink it up. And I cut the main sentiment out of black cardstock. So here I'm just using my tweezers and I'm just anchoring the die cut by putting the tweezers in the hole of the H. That way I'm not actually touching the embossed area because I don't wanna leave a mark on the embossing. I went ahead and embossed this in that same gold pearl powder. Then of course I accidentally touch it while the embossing powder is still hot and so it leaves a fingerprint. No worries though, just go ahead and remelt it and your fingerprint will disappear. So no issues if that happens. I'm just waving it around to cool it off faster. And then I'll glue these two pieces together with art glitter glue with a precision tip on the end. This gives you a little bit of wiggle room since it's a wet adhesive. So you can slide the die cut around until you get it in perfect placement, which is what I prefer. Um, I like to have that little bit of drying time as wiggle room. So I think that looks great. I played around with having more than one leaf, but ultimately I really did just like that one leaf. Here's the finished card where you can see a close up of those gorgeous colors and that lovely gold pearl on the die cut and the torn strip. Huge thanks to Anna for inspiring me to try the torn strip on my cards. I hope you guys enjoyed these projects. Be sure to follow the link down below for the Facebook fan page monthly challenge. We'd love to see what you're creating. So tag us at wow embossing powder and at notable ink so we can see what you got going on. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you real soon with more inspiration. Mm -hmm.